Hello, my name is Pastor Mike. Our devotion for today is entitled, Living Under the Law. And our text, as we continue the Sermon on the Mount, is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 20 through 26. Jesus said, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. But come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be put in prison. But truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. A Christ did not remove the law. No, on the contrary, he showed us that it still applies to us, not only as rules for outward appearances, such as the laws of our country, but also inwardly, on the inside, deep in our heart. That's what he teaches us in the Sermon on the Mount. His first example is the fifth commandment, which states, You shall not murder. Even our civil laws command this. The laws in our society define what is meant by murder and manslaughter and what type of punishment is necessary. However, the danger here is that a person can believe that They've fulfilled all of the criteria for righteousness just as long as they haven't done anything punishable by the laws of our country. Many believe that you can be a good Christian in God's eyes if you live a decent life that's in accordance with all of the laws of our land. However, This is a terrible false assumption that Jesus sets out to correct here. For murder is not only killing and shedding blood. The desire to do it is just as bad. And the same goes for being angry at someone in a sinful way. If you even think about harming someone physically or emotionally, The punishment against you won't stop at what a court of law on earth can impose. No, the ultimate consequence is being eternally separated from God. You see, a person can be completely righteous as far as our civil laws and demands go, yet they could still be lost to God forever. The scribes, And the Pharisees were convinced that they did all that was demanded of them. Many people today within the Christian church share that same conviction. Jesus says, however, that if we have no more righteousness than than that, then we will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So, if we live out our lives obeying the laws of justice, and then seek revenge, we will be judged by God on the last day. And that puts all of us in a very poor position. What then 
is better righteousness? Jesus doesn't give us the answer here. In the Sermon on the Mount, he speaks very little about it, but it is implied everywhere in the Word of God. The bottom line is that there is no other path toward eternal life than the one that leads to the kingdom of forgiveness. You see, we have, we have to understand how bad we truly are so that we can become poor in the Spirit and then start to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Then we can discover the precious pearl. Then we can begin to understand why Jesus invites us to come to him. The good news is that we can receive his righteousness and begin to live with him. That's when we can be at peace with a brother or a sister without demanding judgment against them. That's when we can accept a speedy resolution with someone else without having to wait for the other person to confess to what they've done wrong or ask for your forgiveness. Because we have already been acquitted and escaped God's judgment despite the fact that we are guilty of both anger and harsh words. A thanks be to God that the only path that leads to peace, righteousness, is his forgiveness. Let us pray. Lord God, continually teach us how much we've received for nothing and how much we continue to receive without deserving it. May we remember this the moment that we have a bone to pick with someone else. When we're angry and annoyed, help us to remember all of the reasons that you have to be angry with us, yet have allowed us to live with forgiveness. May this forgiveness that leads to our eternal life with you manifest, show itself in our lives toward the people that you have placed in our path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. See you next time.